the core question is that the mind seems to be pulled into these two polarities. Two polarities. Of okay. how it's going to go. Okay. Either I'm going to meet this guy on the street or in the laughing goat or here mm -hmm. or wherever, who's going to be like, wow, I really feel what you're doing and connect with you and mm -hmm. want to give you $10,000. Great. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would be great. And then the other one's like, well, I can't bank on that. So I have to, mm -hmm. um, get another job awesome. that doesn't serve me. Awesome. Here's well, the third yeah. option. Tell bank me. on life itself. Not the $10,000, not the guy. Those are all avenues you already know. Why not let it surprise you? Someone may offer you something in a completely different way. Or something may show up that you don't even have the ability to imagine because it's never happened to you before. Because you never opened up to the fact that magic is all that creates reality. Not rational thinking. Every time we close down into our rational mind, we close down the, the ways in which magic, it's still magic, creates our reality according to a logical path. Oh, see, life is just logical. If I do this, that happens. Yeah, because you force the energy of magic into a pattern that you expect it to be like. If you break open that expectation pattern, that belief, then anything can happen. And you have to be in that state of anything can happen. So bank on life. Not on that guy with the 10 grand, nor on, oh, maybe I shouldn't bank on that. Don't ever bank on, I cannot bank on life. Mm -hmm. Bank on life itself. Bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Trust in trust. Have faith in faith. Right? Yeah. So then I guess what comes up then is a feeling of like, because these tendencies are still just like happening in, you know, some unconscious moments okay. of like, maybe this, or maybe that, or maybe that guy, or maybe mm -hmm. like, you know, whatever. Sure. There's a fear that that's manifesting or restricting the universe what in is, the invitation. What does fear? What does fear indicate? What does it show you? What does it reveal to you? In a moment of fear, what does that mean? I'll help you out with the first part of the sentence. Cool. It indicates that I believe <laughs> uh, in lack. <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> Epic, dude. You just solved the whole human drama. Just like that. <laughs> Wasn't that hard, right? I think I cheated. Awesome. <laughs> no, you didn't. No. Okay. It was just magic. My, you were supporting yourself. Yeah. My cells don't know that, though. Your cells don't know that? Well, oh, fuck them. You know. <laughs> okay. Just take a bath and send love to the water and in the water. Or put that in. I'm gonna because put the a, body's 8% water. Put a though. sticker on it that says imbecile. <laughs> You could do that too. If that means love to you, then by all means. If we take someone that believes imbecile means love and he puts the sticker on the glass of water and he believes that the word love means hatred, he'll see that the jar with the word love actually deteriorates and the other one thrives. It's all what we put into it. There's a slight element of what conscious collective or what collective is a part of. But anyway, to get back to your point, which is, at this point, the lack belief yeah. that causes fear. Yeah. Lack in what? Lack of what? What lack, what type of lack do you fear the most? And again, you don't fear lack. You fear because you believe in lack. Does that make sense? You don't fear lack. You fear because you believe in lack. Hmm. There is no fear when okay. you don't believe in lack. Okay. Yeah. Fear is created by the yeah. belief in lack. It's an indicator, and when you trace it back, its source is always that you believe something could be lacking. What is that? What do you believe? What is most frightening to you? Well, what arises right now is that I won't have my apartment next month. How freeing. Do you like your apartment? No, I do though. Okay. I, I really do. Well, are there better apartments out there? Well, yeah. Awesome. Well, why not look for these? Maybe cheaper too. Well, because I won't have the money to get first, last, and deposit for that one. Oh, are you sure? That, I mean, that's... Why don't you get the deposit back from this one? Yeah, but it's... Oh, I don't know. Well, anyway, <laughs> you're putting too much of a constraint on your magical reality. Right. I'm not yeah, saying, yeah, I'm I mean, not I'm saying a... don't honor what you do believe, right? Yeah. Because if we go too wacky, meaning if we go too far out there, but we don't actually feel or believe it, then we can cause some temporary like oh, distress in the circumstance because we're not feeling it. But I'm saying utilize these 
out of the box perspectives to get used to them as much as you can mm -hmm. to embody and download those perspectives into realities and then move 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 keep moving keep testing keep experimenting keep expanding keep trusting more and more you don't have to take the jump unless the jump feels like it's all that there is left for you to do like that feels the most exciting feels the only option that resonates then take the jump and you will be supported because you're a ripe apple ready to drop but if you're still ripening just take it at your pace and maybe a little bit beyond your pace but not too far beyond your pace honor what you believe but don't honor it too much does that make sense the balance you have to play with that a little bit for yourself overall i'd say trust completely break free as much as you can as radically as you can and when you're imagining these radical realities these radical changes don't doubt that you're able to do that but check in with how much of that feels true and how much of that feels like obentino said i should do this so let's just do it but you're still caught up you're still closing the valve but oh i should do this it has to resonate it has to the idea of an action as soon as it opens the valve of joy you're good to go you're supported if it doesn't open the valve of joy but you're doing it because it seems to be the most radical thing to do and i told you to be radical uh, does that make sense? It has to flow. It has to come with a juice. It, the idea of doing or taking a certain radical step or change in your life, it has to feel like it's connected to something broader, something greater. It has to resonate. So, what resonates for you? What would be most exciting? Uh, just continuing to follow what's exactly. most exciting. That's excellent. That's... And do you fear that that cannot support you? A little bit. So what if you'd lose your apartment? What would be the worst thing about that? I'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, great. It's, it's a, the story is irrelevant, really. It's, it's more of a deeper, like, uh -huh. so what does losing your feeling? apartment represent to you? Cause you know, you'd be fine. No. So you don't actually yeah. fear losing the apartment, but it represents a more core fundamental idea. Yeah. You, what is that? That's represented by losing the apartment. What's the core? That the universe will not respond. That's to... painful, dude. Isn't yeah. that painful? Yeah. <laughs> It's like feeling betrayed by the only one that exists. Absolutely. It's painful. And many people walk around in this state and that's pessimism, skepticism, realism. They all come from believing the universe is an evil place. It's against you, not for you. But it is you. How could it be against you? It'd be like hurting yourself all the time. It wouldn't do that. It wants to support you fully unconditionally because you are it and it is you. There is no separation anywhere. You are created out of creation only. You did not drop into creation from a substance created outside of creation. Or did you? Did something outside of the universe create you and then drop you into the universe? What is your body made out of? If not existence, if not consciousness, if not creation. Everything that is you, including your consciousness, including your body, your vehicle of expression, including your circumstances, including the people you meet, including the choices you make, where is that created out of and in and as if not the one being the one creation itself are you made out of anything but creation itself if not then how can you be separate from it how can you be other than it how can you not be supported by it right so that's what it is for most people it's the idea it's the core fundamental idea that you're not supported that you're betrayed that you're separate that's painful dude it's really painful. Does it feel good? It's one of the most painful beliefs out there that you lack union with the creator and creation. That it could be against you. One of the most painful beliefs. Why? Because it's one of the most untrue beliefs. That's why it hurts the most. Again, the emotional body just lets you know whether or not you're truthful in your perspective. That's it. Emotion has no other purpose. I'll repeat, emotion has no other purpose but to show you whether or not your perspective is in alignment with the actual truths of existence. There is no other purpose to emotion whatsoever. Isn't that good to know? Makes life simple. Okay. Nice, dude. Thank you. <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs>